What's up, YouTube? Today's video, I'm gonna be doing a little twist from my normal spiel. I'm going over what I am not so good at in structural engineering. And yes, there are plenty of things that I am bad at or have very little experience with. So grab a seat in the auditorium, grab some popcorn. Jose, Josue are both there and uh, let's get into it. Number one, I'm not very proficient in CMU design or block construction, I've seen it called. I studied this topic briefly for my PE exam and managed to get through the questions that they asked me on the exam. If you asked me what those questions were that I had to answer, I completely blotted that out of my memory. I have come across it briefly here and there during my professional career, um, but I haven't done anything extensive like designing, you know, lateral systems using CMU or really anything else um, like a full structure out of CMU block. And this may come as no shock that I'm not good at CMU, so that also means that I am not well versed in the TMS 402 slash 602 masonry code. This is a code and building material that I'll be studying immensely towards my SE exam. I think that's a really big takeaway is that we make sure as we progress as engineers that we identify continuously those weak spots in our engineering and those areas where we're not so good or we're rusty and we need to freshen up and catch up on. By addressing your weak spots, you're holding yourself accountable for continually improving yourself. It's so easy to be content with things that you've already learned and now have mastered and can do repeatedly over and over. That's a good feeling, but over time that kind of leads you down that one trick pony route, which you don't want to be as an engineer. Make sure you're not identifying things and then getting sad about it or getting upset about it. That's not the point. Identify things so that you can make a clear list of steps to uh, overcome them and improve upon them and then ultimately explore and get better at them. Number two, I'm not very good at structural analysis software, like at all. Um, anything from eTabs to SAP 2000 to STAD Pro to uh, safe. All of those softwares I'm really inefficient with. Um, and that's kind of sucks to say because I know people who, and usually most of the time it's younger people who are very, very good at that kind of stuff. But for me, I just, it never caught on too well. For me, I never had a lot of experience with it when I first started engineering. I had even less experience with it in school. Someone else always seemed to take the reins on that when we had projects where you had to utilize it. It's an area where personally I want to improve upon. Um, and I think the best way is that, well, one, to get more projects where I need to use software like that. But two, I'm looking to kind of take classes, I believe, in especially something like eTabs. And some of you out there might be thinking right now, whoa, that's crazy. I can't believe he doesn't know that stuff. But hey, you know, we're all different in what we do and do not know. And it's not that I don't know it, which means I'll never know it. It means that I don't know it now, so I need to spend time to learn it so that I know how to do it later. There's a big difference there. Just because someone doesn't know something doesn't mean that they will never know how to do it. It just means they don't know it yet. You need to stay eager, excited, curious all the time when you're exploring areas that you're unfamiliar with in your academics, in your professional career, you can't be scared of it. If you're scared of it, you're setting up a roadblock, a wall, whatever you want to call it, and you're only making it 10 times harder to, you know, get over that hurdle or to learn that new thing or to complete that task. It doesn't help you whatsoever. It hinders you like tremendously. Numero trace. This may come as a little bit of a shock, but it's it's kind of a gray area for me. It is concrete design. Now, pump the brakes. You may see that I have many videos on concrete design, concrete design examples. I want to be clear on the difference of what I'm getting at here. Kind of concrete components, um, you know, spread footings, strip footings, retaining walls, even columns and one-way slabs, two-way slabs, concrete beams, you know, torsion, shear, bending, all of that kind of stuff, uh, I pretty much have down, I wanna say. You know, maybe I have to brush up on some areas. Uh, I studied the ACI a lot when I was studying for my PE exam, and I got what I believe to be very well versed in it, but since I passed my exam, uh, I hadn't really continued to use the ACI in depth a lot. Where I lack in concrete design is more full on um, concrete structure design. Structures where the vertical lateral components are reinforced concrete shear walls and your concrete diaphragms, um, all your lateral elements, that stuff, I, I have very little experience with. I, I could work my way through it and I've done example problems before for myself, not 
not uh, recorded here on the channel. And knowing all the ins and outs of the code and what you're allotted to do for a concrete structure, both in seismic design, especially, and um, just in regular design, I'm not very good and I need to get better at it. So again, another area that I will be studying immensely uh, on my pursuit for my SE. Number four. This one I have zero experience with. I've never even done a design example. Some of you might go, ah, turn the video off and say I'm never watching Rich and Kesteva again. Hopefully you don't though, you stick around and you just, you take a breath, okay? Hold Jose's hand, it's gonna be okay. I have never done PT design before, so post-tension systems, uh, never done them. There are parts of the US where this type of construction is very, very normal and is used all of the time. In the Pacific Northwest where I'm located, that's one of those locations. It's used on almost every mid-rise and high-rise um, that's constructed. Usually there's a concrete core. Again, another area I'm not very good at. And then PT slabs. Your boy here has never done one. I have zero input. I don't even know where to start. I, I mean, I kind of know where to start, but I, I've never done a design example. I've never designed with it. I've never talked with someone about it. It's never been on a project of mine. So this is where I am the least, 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 least experienced with. And it's something that I would like to get into one day, but it's one of the building systems that's at the very, very bottom of my list. Not for any particular reason, I just, it doesn't pique my curiosity that much. And people who are good at it, they're very, very good at it. Usually it's, you're, for that one, what, from what I've seen so far, you're either all in or you're not. There's kind of not an in-between for it, but I'm not the one to be giving advice on anything like that any way, shape, or form until I really get it under my belt. So with this channel, unfortunately, you won't be seeing too much of that. But during my live studies towards my SE, you may be seeing me work on PT problems. I probably should work on PT problems. So when that day comes, I'll see you there and we'll learn it together. Any of you expertise PT designers out there, jump in the chat sometime when I am studying it and like, give me some banter, help me out a little bit, give me some pointers, I'm gonna need you there. Number five, steel lateral systems. Same thing, different material as my explanation for concrete. Uh, I am not very well versed in steel lateral systems um, for building structures. So anything from K braces to X braces to chevrons, um, any type of braced frame, so your vertical lateral elements, uh, I am not the best at. I consider myself pretty knowledgeable with the AASC steel manual, but the seismic design manual associated with it, I have a little experience with, and I really need to get in there, study it hard, and tab that book up like no other. You all know what I'm talking about. This also includes systems like moment frames, and again, I have designed moment frames before, and I've designed brace frames and X framing before, um, but it's for much smaller structures usually, as opposed to a, a primary lateral system for a structure, where you have not just, um, steel specifications, but you also have mandated code specifications for that building system type. And I'm pretty sure that the sun is gonna burn through my eyeballs in any second. So let's pull the shade down. <sighs> As my channel progresses and I do more and more studying, I'm really excited to share with all of you what I learn as I tackle these systems. Now that I've gotten everything off of my chest, it's time for you all to do the same. Leave some comments down below of areas where you think you're not very good in, uh, in structural engineering. If you're sitting there saying, man, Rich really needs to study a lot more. There's a lot of things he doesn't know. Leave a like down below. Those are gonna be my pity likes for this video. So I'll take them and it'll just fuel me to keep studying and keep bettering myself for all of you. And if you like these kind of conversations and you wanna see more of them and you want to grow with me, consider subscribing down below. And if you wanna take it a step further and join me for more in-depth conversations, both about the academic side of things, but also about the business side of things of structural engineering, subscribe to the Peruka gang. We'd love to have you there. All right, I've said enough. I'll see everybody in the next video. Later team.